Hey everybody, Alex Kolkowski here with Prime Media Consulting and the Total BS Show. I am super excited today because I get the opportunity to talk to my friend Derek at Gold Shield Services. So for those that are unfamiliar with this show and unfamiliar with Gold Shield, let's kind of unpack this a little bit. The Total BS Show is all about small business owners. It's about uh, the trials, the tribulations, the struggle, the, the, the great things that have happened over the course of your journey in growing a business. But we really want to unpack uh, the, the idea of what was the thing that got you over the hurdle and what were those hurdles to begin with. And so what's really cool is that Derek with Gold Shield, uh, for those that aren't familiar, they're based out of Algonquin and I believe Des Plaines, Illinois, right? And um, they have so they have multiple locations. So we're going to talk about how it is handling multiple locations. But more importantly, I want to kind of di- dissect how long you've been in business and what the hell have you guys been doing with this rapid growth that you've been doing in the Chicagoland area. So uh, welcome, Derek, for for be participating with us. I'm I'm super excited to get you on. And uh, tell us a little bit about who you are more than what I can say because I know you love to talk. <laughs> And, yeah. and, and so let's, let's kind of unpack how did Gold Shield start and what have you guys been doing in the, over the course of the last you know, few years of, of really ramping this business up? Yeah, no problem at all. And it, to everyone out there, yes, I could talk all day long. This show is not long enough for my conversation, just FYI or off the bat. But uh, so Gold Shield Service 2007 is uh, when it started. Um, it actually started as a different name uh, back in the day. It was A and C Mechanical, the letter A, the letter N, the letter C Mechanical. Um, so some of our customers and clients out there um, know us as that and still call us that every now and then. Um, and we can talk a little bit about the, the name change and why that is and, and what happened with that. Um, the, the bigger part of it comes down to Art has been in the electrical and HVAC field. He actually got his electric license back. Um, I believe it was 2005 is when he got his electrical license um, and worked um, in 2008, kind of had a really bad uh, hit with electrical work in general across the entire market. There was a big crash that happened in 2008. Um, so he had an HVAC company that um, brought him underneath his wing um, and was like, hey, you're a licensed electrician, we can use that, um, but we're going to teach you HVAC as well. Um, and over the course of the years, Art has become a master in his profession, um, not only with the electrical side of things, being a master electrician, but also a master HVAC um, technician as well. And there's really not much I haven't seen Art. I can't even name one thing off the top of my head other than like a monster huge chiller that Art has not been able to figure out, work on, or already knows how to do everything on, um, which is just an incredible part of who he is. Um, so, yeah. So. Um, so now you have two you have two locations one is in displays and one is algonquin uh yep. and the algonquin office is newer so yep. kind of tell me a little bit the story about how you uh decided to move into the McHenry county community sure um so art is uh lives in lake in the hills um always love this area i've, I've been in this area m- multiple times as well um i, I ride a motorcycle and Fox River is one of my favorite places. Um, we eat down at Donkey Inn. We eat down at the, um, uh, oh my gosh, uh, Port Edwards. Um, I couldn't think of that for a second. Uh, but uh, those those two places really, it's just a gorgeous area. Um, and a business end, um, why this area is so um, important to us is there's 
yes, there is a lot of HVAC companies out there. This area actually has a shortage around HVAC areas. Um, the area that we were looking at and looking into was looking for a certain age of HVAC equipment that are in people's homes. Um, and there's ways to track that. And we found that this entire area, Crystal Lake, Lake in the Hills, Huntley, Algonquin, uh, Cary, uh, Hampshire, all, all these surrounding areas all have the similar, they were built at the similar time and all of its original equipment. Um, so we're a big advocate on doing things the right way. And what we found in this area is that whoever installed a lot of the equipment, um, one of the most common things we see in the area right now is the amount of returns. Um, so you have returns and supplies, returns suck air in, supplies blow the air out. There was not enough returns installed originally in these homes. So it's actually creating more energy efficiency problems with your HVAC system in your home. So it's a big education part, which Alex, I know you know, um, I love to educate people on what we do, how we do it, why we do it, um, and our differences between what we are versus the normal HVAC company, um, which is big, so. And you're not just the HVAC company. I mean, you mm -hmm. guys have installed water heaters before, you guys are electric uh, electrician, as you were saying before, handyman yep. service is something that you guys do. I mean, really when you think of the name Gold Shield, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's not just HVAC like a lot of people like to do. You guys want to be basically yep. the full home services company where if you have any need, we have a yep. team of people that can serve you and make sure that you are you're getting the best quality service that you possibly can so tell me a little bit about the decision to you know really expand into the macro of all the different services by instead of being laser focused because sometimes you see people say you should stick to one thing when you guys have mm -hmm. completely done the opposite yeah so i think it comes down to expertise in each of the fields so it's not one guy doing multiple things. It's multiple people doing multiple things. So we have a duck expert. We have a smart home integration expert. We have an electrician. We actually have a bunch of electricians. Um, and those electricians have specific qualities inside of them that they are experts at. So we have a panel expert that literally knows code so well that she understands, and she's a female too, which is even even more cool. Um, she's probably the one, one of the most thorough electricians I've ever met in my entire life. Um, and she's a panel expert. She's a code expert. Um, we have an Elgin uh, electrician that specifically focuses on Elgin code because it's actually different than what it is in Chicago. And these are things that homeowners don't know. Um, even people that live in Elgin, oh, I'm an electrician. Well, there's a difference between a Chicago electrician and an Elgin electrician. There's actually different licenses. And, and a lot of homeowners don't want to ask for that verification. Ask for the verification. We'll give it to you. It's no questions about it. Um, so we have a um, duct expert, we have a humidifier expert, boiler expert, um, RTU, so rooftop units for commercial units. Um, there's so many aspects of what we do. A lot of it ties into each other to be able to coexist with it, but you're not going to have a typical HVAC guy is going to come across a boiler system and not know what to do with it. And it actually acts like a big water heater that's heating water up and distributing through your house. So there's a couple things that is different with that so that's why we do it so each of the areas that we are expanding to and giving you that total home experience is because we have an expert in that field and then we have a trainer or an apprentice that's actually working with that person to learn that trade as well so as we grow you'll see this funnelization of um you like that word funnelization i just made it up it just came out of my head real quick i've been uh, using since 07 buddy <laughs> exactly so you have an expert that's doing it and you have a trainee that's learning it. So we, what will end up happening is now we have, once that first trainee becomes signed off by the expert, then they are a technician. And we don't call them an expert until they have a number of years in the field and they can diagnose really complicated issues. Um, steam boilers. If you ever ran into a steam boiler issue or in the HVAC field, most steam boiler guys, they are so few and far between. The pitch of how the pipes are in the house can literally make the system work or not. And you could spend years trying to get that pitch right if you just don't know what you're doing. So we do steam boilers as well. So it's like those kind of things that are, are very crucial. Um, tankless water heaters. Um, and each of our techs go to training once a year for different aspects of the business. So we're a Generac generator dealer. 
We've gone to Texas. We go every year um, to learn the most new and improved equipment that they're working with. We're on their website. We're certified dealers. We're certified installers and service members on them too. We have parts in stock. Um, so it's not like we have to run to a supplier. We actually have them in our warehouse and in our trucks. Um, so that kind of is where you're seeing a, a difference of blowing up. It's not one person doing everything. It's not like your typical handyman that, oh, I can put in a water heater and I can do this and I can do that. I, the jack of all trades is what I like to call people like that. It's one specific person per per category on there or multiple. Well, let's, let's unpack that a little bit because, uh, I mean, it, it's you and Art that, that kind of run the show at Gold Shield. And tell me a little bit about the separation of powers because most, most business owners are doing yeah. everything themselves. Like they're yeah. doing the marketing, they're doing the branding, they're doing the execution, they're, I mean, they're doing the bookkeeping, they're doing the operations, they're doing, they're doing all of that, right? Yeah. And, and you and I both know that that's a mistake, right? But tell me a little bit about the learning curve that you guys took in from other sure. ventures when you guys then decided to come into Gold Shield and make this company the viable business that it is today. Yeah, so the bigger, um, the big part about that and how that works, Art is the expert in the field. Um, and he's the, I like to call the supervisor of the tech. So he's in charge of quality control. Um, I am not an electrician. I am not a certified HVAC technician. I'm the business end of um, the company. Um, and I have a major retail background. I have a major business background, investment background. Um, so I, I love to manage money. It's my favorite thing in the world to do. I love to manage efficiency. Um, I'm a numbers guy. Uh, I, I can't spell for anybody that wants to know. I'm a terrible speller, horrible speller. I'll say that 50 more times. Um, Art is the mechanical thinker. He's the um, person to go to when it comes down to when there's a really big issue. So the differentiation of power is I run all the marketing. Um, we actually have a full-time accountant that works for us. Um, and right now she's actually doing accounting slash dispatching. So she'll take the phones during the day and I take the phones at night and overnight. Um, if they become too overnight, then we split the phones in half and we both can take them. So my biggest um, advocate to small business owners that are looking to, to have two people in charge, have a clear definition of what your roles and responsibilities are. So mine is HR, marketing, and business strategy and management. Arts is technician overview, big picture, so core values of the company, um, and any major technical issues that go on in the field. So art is most of the time in the office, unless there's a major project, um, let's say we're quoting a 20 ton rooftop that is non-existent on a commercial building. Art's gonna be the guy that's gonna be working with that business owner that needs to do that. So he's going through all the technical aspects of it. He's then working with me on money. Where do we need to be? Where's the pricing is for what the unit costs, how much labor is gonna be involved? and the return on investment um, for that material and for that business owner so that we can actually get a quoted price. Um, so there's a lot that goes into that too because there's marketing, uh, market um, revenue across the board too. We can't come in ridiculously high, we can't come in ridiculously low. Um, we gotta come in right at that middle spot where it should be um, and it, it takes a little bit to get there. Um, so there's a lot that goes in there. So business owners in general, yes. Alex, 100% agree. Um, small business owners take on too much themselves when they can hire somebody to take that responsibility and then they oversee that as well. Um, so it's an oversee thing, not a I'm doing this every day kind of thing. What's the, what's the thing that you realize you need to outsource or let go of? We're, we're getting to that point right now where we need to, uh, we've just hired two apprentices, we hired another full-time HVAC tech um, and, it, and everything is, wonderfully running smoothly. We got a really well oiled machine right now. I feel great. I'm sleeping awesome at home. Um, I mean, it's just one of those things. I just got back from a nine day vacation. My phone probably rang, I dude, it probably rang three times on vacation. Um, so that makes me happy too, that you know we have some really good systems and processes in place. And some of the stuff was just customer experience, um, you know, conversations that we needed or high level approval for um, big jobs that need to be. So obviously I gotta be involved in a conversation because it's bottom line numbers. Um, we need to hire a full-time dispatcher next because um, our phone is, is ringing more and it's starting to hinder um, performance on a accounting aspect. So I don't wanna put too much pressure on our accountant to answer phones. 
And, and we knew this going in and she knew this too, that she wouldn't be on phones all the time. Um, and we just weren't there yet to be able to have that full time person just sitting there waiting for phones to come in um, because the phone just wasn't, it wasn't ringing every 10 seconds. It was, you know, ringing every couple hours, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, we're, we're about ready to do that next. <laughs> so why, why I like you so much in regards to, you know, a business relationship is that, um, we, we've, we known each other for a very short time, uh, in regards mm -hmm. to, to, we were part of a couple networking groups and things like that together, but yeah. I like that you're a salesman. <laughs> and salesmen just know how to talk to each other because we cut the we cut the BS out, right? No, no. Yep. And so it's it's like, what do you need? How can I get? How can I get what you need? And um, I think that small business owners really need to look at how are they communicating? Are they over communicating? Are they under communicating? Are they direct to the point? Do they beat around the bush? Do they, uh, as I like to call, it, grin fuck you? Uh, where it's like, oh yeah, 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 and then nothing ever happens out of it. Um, sure. so, so tell me a little bit about your learning and if you're going to talk to a small business owner, mm -hmm. what are the, the ideas for sales 101 that I would be seeing most people make a mistake on, uh, when you're out in the field, just communicating with people, um, not having empathy for empathy versus sympathy is a good, is a good way. I'm going to kind of start with this because you're in someone's home for us um, and you need to understand that things cost a lot of money. HVAC systems are not inexpensive, they're expensive. Um, and it's always at the worst time that it happens. Um, so being understanding and putting yourself in real life shoes. Um, as, as you know, Alex, as a salesperson, the number one thing to do is build rapport with a client. Um, if you build rapport, they build trust. If you build trust, you can literally sell them anything in the entire world. Um, and it's not a caveat that I, we're selling the right products and I stand behind our products and I don't work for companies and I never have that don't stand behind what they do. Um, and I know what we stand behind because I've built this up. Art has already started it, has, has made the core values what they are, um, and he lives them every single day. I taught him to get the right people and help hire the right people that are going to exemplify that vision of the the ideal um, customer service in an HVAC world. Um, it's been said before, I'll say it again, the HVAC world has a really crappy like persona that we're just here to rip everyone off. Um, it's not true, it's not true with us. And I can't speak for other HVAC companies. We go behind sometimes with these other HVAC companies that come out. We can tell when you're being shady. We can tell that your install is not correct. And the hard part is, is they always do it in places that the homeowner is not going to see and is not going to realize until five years down the road and your HVAC system breaks. And, you know, one truck guy is now out of business because he couldn't figure out how to start his business company and make it run and make it grow and do all that kind of stuff. So now you're, you're SOL. So, I mean, it's, it's totally true. I mean, you don't. And stuff like that, which really makes it difficult. So, yeah, I mean, you, you guys also are competing, as you just said, against guys who moonlight against guy I mean I, I do the same I we all deal with it you know we all have people sure. that are part-timers or I could do these or yeah it's not that bad I saw a YouTube video on how to do this um, <laughs> so I mean like how, how do you go uh, compete against the people that you don't really know about does that make sense it, it does make sense um, I, you know I, I focus on who we are I focus on what our value is um, and we haven't changed that. So I, I'm not going to adjust pricing because you're telling me that a single truck guy that's working out of his house is a thousand dollars cheaper than me. That's great. He has no overhead. He doesn't have two locations. He doesn't have health insurance for himself or his team. He doesn't have um, benefits and programs and training seminars and um, expenses that need to come into that play. So for me, we talk about value and we talk about longevity with our clients when we're in our homes. As, as a means of trust that we're gonna be around for the next 10 years. We're gonna be around for the next 30 years, for the next 50 years. Um, you've seen our growth pattern. You've seen what I'm, you see what I'm trying to do and where I'm trying to go with it and how fast we're moving with this. Um, if I have 10 new techs come in right now and they're the best techs in the world, I'll hire every single one of them and I'll literally go buy them a new truck right now. No questions asked. And I will find the work to make them busy because I'm not gonna lose 
an exceptional person over something where a one truck guy is going out and just doing crappy work all day long. Um, so at the end of the day, there is some competition. I, I don't ever put myself or the company in the category of competing with somebody like that because it's not going to happen. I can't compete against that. And we'll tell a client, I, I've told that to clients before, like, I'm sorry, I can't compete with that number. Um, it's just not feasible. And it's funny because in this area, especially, and, and that's another thing I love about this area, the clients out here are so amazing. I, I can't, can't say that enough. The people are friendly. They're understanding, they're responsive to what we're trying to talk about. They're listening to the education. I've heard people talk about our, my Zoom calls and some some guy I just spent 45 minutes on the phone yesterday with, he's like, well, I watched your whole smart home conversation. I was like, dude, that thing was like 55 minutes long. You listened to the whole thing? He's like, yeah, you had a, you had a really good conversation. You knew what you were talking about in there. And I'm like, great, he wants to order a whole, I mean like a whole house. He just bought a house every part of it he wants to do smart home in it which is just to be fair yeah i should probably get at least a commission on that one because i was amazing <laughs> on that video yeah you were you were <laughs> we had a great interaction day it was a really fun day um so yeah true true to yourself um don't you know haters are gonna hate people are gonna talk stuff and i'm okay with that if friendly like i always say this friendly competition is one of those things that i'm okay with because it keeps everyone's prices where they should be so we don't have this you know, monopoly of, of cost that goes up for everyone. Um, but at the same time, it keeps us rethinking ways to be better all the time. So you get every customer is getting a better experience every single time. And the people that are not giving that experience or not changing are going to die off and be empty or broke or complacent with where they are. You know, I, I find it funny that, you know, you and I are very similar. We're very direct people. Um, oh, yeah. We're very, you know salt of the earth, salt of the earth type people where we're just real like we try and be as honest at the moment as we possibly can be and as business owners uh we try and do that with customers yes, and with yes. other wow. business owners Does that have Nikor? and yeah. so it's just it's what's, by hold on got Nikor first sorry yeah no worries. so as as business owners like we we sometimes you get flack for that right for being brutally honest mm -hmm. and and what's interesting is that even even your your competitors can try and use that to your disadvantage or your or detractors can use that to your disadvantage in regards to well he's just a jerk or he's whatever and it's known we're just to the fact to the point and yeah. and so tell me a little bit about um how that works in your benefit and how it can also like steer sometimes a conversation in the wrong way because they might have another perception of you or your business mm -hmm. before they actually talk to you and your business yeah, I think that's a it's a it's kind of a caveat for me because being in sales for so long and in in visiting so many customers on a daily basis in a retail setting where you have thousands of people that walk in your door every single day, um, you have to adjust yourself to each client. Um, you can't be um, the same persona, the same directness with it. And over the years, I've learned when when you're just yourself, and if you're yourself, you can own it, which is fine. If you're direct and you're you're blunt and stuff like that, not you're not going to get a lot of sales out of that. Um, you need to tailor to what each customer wants and needs, and listen to what they what they're what they're looking for. If they're looking for more safety, then we need to talk about more safety conversation. If they're looking for more price value, then we need to focus on price value. Um, you need to be able to adjust that as a business owner because you're losing clients and you're losing money right away without being able to do that. So, I think. The disadvantage is if, if you're going to be that direct with somebody in a, in a client standpoint. Um, I mean, I'm direct with you, Alex, because I know you can handle it. I know that you you respond to that better. You don't need all the you know BS behind it. Um, you you want that, but there's a lot of people that need icing on the cake, um, need a little more education, um, which is completely fine. So as a business owner, you need to be able to tailor yourself to that. But the bigger part of that is you need to tailor your team to that as well because it's not just you. I'm not selling these systems in homes. I have my technicians selling them. If they're not able to respond to each client specifically and give them feedback, if we don't make a sale, I wanna know why. I wanna hear the conversation. And I'm not gonna beat the tech up on the first time, like, oh my God, I can't believe you didn't sell that, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to 
actively listen to what the client is and I'm going to seek to understand, to, to figure out what we could have done better and help educate my tech to talk differently, be able to um, relate themselves differently and be able to get the customer to trust you in what we're about to do because it's the right thing. Um, I know, I wanna just walk into someone's home and be like, guess what, you're doing this system, I know it's right for you and you can't hear anything else about it. Nobody is gonna really respond to that. You need to be able to look at the person that's in front of you, know your audience and understand how to uh, tailor that to it too. So it's, it's thousands of customers learning for me because you, you, when you're in retail, you have this, you have this real fast interaction. It's, it's five to 10 minute conversation. You got five minutes, it's actually less than, it's like 30 seconds to gain someone's interest. If you don't get it when that 30 seconds, you're done and over with. So you need to be able to say what you're looking for, what's your budget if you need to ask that question. And I never really talk about budgeting until it's brought up by the client um, because that gives me an idea of what their main focus is. If they want the best quality installed HVAC with the most amount of um, energy efficiency and home indoor air quality, that's not inexpensive. That's quite expensive to do. Um, and we wanna make sure that we tailor to that too. Um, because that's the important part is is listening, you know, to your clients. So let's let's unpack your story a little bit. I mean, sure. we, we've alluded to the fact that you've you've been in sales for a while. You know, who really kind of opened the door for you to really get started? And then how did how did this uh, whole gold shield thing kind of pivot your world into this? Because you've yeah. you've been traveling New York, Texas, all over the place. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I grew up, I was born in Phoenix, Arizona, in Luke Air Force Base. My mom was in the Air Force. Um, I grew up in upstate New York, a really small country town, uh, very quiet, very green, very lakey. It was gorgeous and awesome. Um, I was an auto mechanic back in the day. I went to school for it. Um, so I'm a very mechanical person to begin with. I, I love tinkering with things. I love taking things apart, putting them back together. I love figuring out how to make things more efficient. Um, and I love to talk. Um, so. I had got into the uh, the auto mechanic field. I absolutely hated it. It was 100 hours a week. It was hot and sweaty in this car dealership. I had um, it service advisors that were lying to customers in front of me. It was super uncomfortable. And it was probably the dealership that I worked at. Um, I worked at a couple of them. They were all kind of the similar stuff. One was better than the other. I just didn't feel good. I didn't wake up every morning and be like, man, I really enjoy my life. Like I really care about what I'm doing. Um, I wanted to talk to the customers. I wanted to educate them from a young age about all the stuff I just spent money learning on how your car works and how your engine works and how your transmission works and what you should be doing maintenance. I wanna teach that because it builds residual income for people coming back. It's, it's comeback business every single time. So I want you to come to my place every 3,000 miles. Back in the day, it used to be 3,000 miles. Oil is a lot better now. Um, I wanted, I wanted you to come back because then you're meeting me. You're, you're wanting me as your technician. And it was really funny because I had met a gentleman and he's like, you know, you're really good at, you know, at telling me what's wrong with my car and I feel really comfortable. He's like, you should do retail. And I was like, ah, you know, it, it's not, I don't know if I want to be in a mall every single day. You know what I mean? Like um, the, the mall rat is what they, they called them back in the day. And, um, I got approached by a company. Um, uh, it started off with Sharper Image, um, and it was a tech company. Um, they sold massage chairs and weird stuff. Um, if you haven't noticed already, I, I'm different. I, I know that. I, I, I think differently. I'm weird. I'm dorky. I, I don't even care. I own it. Um, I love. I love different. Um, Steve Jobs is my favorite person in the entire world. Um, his, his motto was think different. I've been doing that my whole life. So it just makes it easy for me to relate to what, who he is. I, I don't think I have the neurotic stuff that he has. I do. Um, young yeah. at people. I can say, I can see that <laughs> with you. So, um, I came down to, uh, I got really good at that. Unfortunately, uh, the CEO of uh, sharper image, um, I, I worked myself first off as a part-time sales associate within a year I had my own store within the year after that I grew that store from a million dollars to three million dollars um, so it was a huge growth process I hired a bunch of people we were nationally known in a small little town of just blowing up really fast and um, at the end of the day I got 
recruited by a bigger company, a 200 year old company, uh, privately owned. And they said, hey, we, we want you to work in our, sh- our store. It's a shoe store. And I said, man, I love shoes. I always have. Um, I have 180 pairs of shoes. Um, I have three. Yeah. I have three. Yeah, three. <laughs> yeah. so um, the shoes are the soul of the person. It's what makes people happy. I know you like that pun right there, didn't I like you? It. I, I haven't like said that, that four thousand times in my life. Um, happy feet, happy life is is what it came down to. So uh, I opened sixty stores across the country, lived in thirty states. Um, I traveled a bunch. I did budgeting, marketing, hiring, um, uh, letting people go, training, teaching. So that was my career in retail and how I really involved myself in people. So. I invested my life into people as a person, and this comes back from my dad. My dad was a CEO. He grew a really small company into a major national chain. His his biggest philosophy was invest in people. People will invest back into you, and that investment in people and you will invest in money and create revenue, and that revenue becomes sustainable. To hire and fire somebody costs a lot of money. To hire somebody, spend the time to train them, to just end up firing them, in a year is tens of thousands of dollars of our labor that you're wasting. And if you can get that person and you hire the right person and you and you listen to what their needs are and you're very transparent about what you're looking for, what your core values are and how your um, progression of their plan, so what their plan is and you stay true to that, um, as well as listening to human needs, um, my favorite part about art, above many things, is that art is such a family guy that if we get a tech that calls me right now and says I have a family emergency, I will have zero issues calling every one of their clients to tell them that he has a family issue and we have to reschedule you. There's nothing in this world that tops family. Family is the most important thing in the world. I don't care. I, money, it does not even come close to where family time comes into it. So. Um, yeah, it, can, it kind of goes with that. So fast forward to a couple different careers with um, I retired at one point and was sitting at home and I was like, I'm going to start a different field that I've never been into. And I love animals and I ran a pet hospital for four years and grew that and uh, had a really good thing. And it's funny because as time goes on, I've, I've realized more and this is the biggest thing I can I can tell people. People run everything, no matter what you do. It doesn't matter what field you're in, whether you're a cleaning business, whether you're an SEO company, whether you're an HVAC company, if you do not take care of people, the people that work for you day in and day out, the grind, they will not take care of you. I don't care how much you pay them. I can pay a kid 10 bucks an hour and I guarantee you I can get more work out of him than somebody who I give $50 an hour to and just let him do his thing. I will get the $10 an hour guy that I spend time with teaching and training to do more work and be more productive and make me more money than the $50 an hour guy that thinks he knows the whole world and I just don't talk to you every day. Um, I talk to my techs 20 times a day, easy, all day long. They call me, I call them, constant communication. I check up on them. If I haven't heard from them in two to three hours and they're on a job site, I know they're doing a full install today. I've already gotten probably five phone calls from them. Hey, how are you guys doing out there? Do you have all the parts you need? Do you guys have water? Do you guys, we bought them umbrellas this year for outside, hooked to the unit so that they can have shade. Um, so any way that I can take care of my guys without obviously you know, ruining the business on a money end, um, because we have to pay attention to that as well, I'm gonna do it, no questions asked. So small business owners, really simple. Take care of your people. Your people will take care of you. Um, it's very stressful if you don't. I promise you're not gonna have a fun life. So what is the hardest thing about owning a business? Oh, constant stress about business. <laughs> so, um, and I learned this quickly with Art. So I've been following Art for about three years. I've known Art for about a year and a half now. I, I've been working with him for a year and a half now. Um, but I've been following his company for three years. I've watched his progression from when he started as ANC Mechanical and worked his way into Gold Shield and his vision and the people that were working for them. And he had posted a position opening for um, an office position. And I went in and had an interview. And he's like, Yeah, you're way more than what I'm looking for. But you know, I don't know if I can afford you and all that kind of stuff. And I said, let's just try this thing and see what happens, dude. Like, 
I'm not, let's take a risk here, you know? Um, so I took a, a pay cut on it to come in to be able to um, take care of it. And I, I felt something different about this company. I felt something different about art. And um, yeah, we, we can talk about some some bad stuff. They uh, they had a couple people, he had a couple people working for him that were really holding them back. Um, and it took a little bit to get art to, to jump on it because he's such a people person. But there's a point in time where the training doesn't work and the constant feedback doesn't work and the motivation's not there and the Mr. Know-it-all um, is not open to change and open to different ideas, those people are holding you back from growing. Um, so we let, I believe, five people go within the first year of me working here and we hired those five people back in different people and this is the team that we have today this is the customer experience that we have today we just hit a hundred reviews at five stars with google uh, between our displays location and our algonquin location it's a huge win for us um and, and we when i first started i think we were at 40 so we've gone 60 positive five star reviews um, every now and then you'll get a client who's not happy or not satisfied but uh, look at how boring it see how much i talk just yawning in there. Um, <laughs> it's hot. We don't know an HVAC company that can take care of that. Anyway, not out here. Not out there. <laughs> the expensive fix. Uh, so, uh, yeah, came down, push come to shove. We, we, we sat down with Art. Art understands that now and, you know, is constantly challenging uh, different ways of thinking. And, and I love his thought process of how he's kind of molding things into – what he wants and why he wants it. And that's why we changed from ANC Mechanical to Gold Shield Services is because the the word mechanical in a residential world versus a commercial world is two very different things. Um, so mechanical is more rigid and tough and you know Iron Man worker kind of stuff, which is great for more of the commercial side of stuff, but the services um, is more of a, a all around home experience. So we do commercial and residential. And we've had this big shift. We were mostly commercial, and now we're about 50-50 commercial residential. Um, and it's because of this area. And we'd like to continue to progression that move over to um, residential side and grow different areas of what we want to do uh, with that. Now, actually, you know our plan for that too, which is cool. So, 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 in your opinion, what makes the successful entrepreneur? What, what make, what are the, the inherent qualities? that you need to have or work on to really make this thing work? <sighs> listening is like the, communication and listening is like one of the two biggest things I see with entrepreneurs. They call themselves entrepreneurs, but they're yet not willing to listen to what other people who do not consider themselves entrepreneurs. I don't know everything. If I can't think of an idea, then I I will ask my techs, what, what do you need? And I'll listen to that and change it. You need to be willing to change. You need to be willing to move. You be, need to be willing to stop everything you think you know and change your persona on every part of it. The other thing is um, you learn off of everything. Any interaction you have, there's something to learn. If you can't see that, you need to stop after every conversation and kind of relive that conversation to find something that you can take back to either change, motivate, um, adjust, do anything like that. COVID's a great scenario. It was like such a huge stop for the world um, and scary and unknown and political and every other you know nonsense that's going on. At the end of the day, people got scared. Our phones literally stopped for three weeks. I mean, I got maybe one call a day from like our loyal customers that were like, hey, this is broken. It was a weird temperature outside. It was uncommonly warmer winter, which means slower in the HVAC field. And it was across the board. Um, so, and we're spending a ton of money on marketing. So you need to be able to say, nope, we're gonna change. We're gonna do something real different. We're gonna do a hard stop. Facebook was terrible for me when I first started a year ago. I did not have any luck with it. 
It was um, a lot of people looking for just that discounted handyman kind of services and friend of a friend and I need to hook up and, you know, it was just not good for business. And I I told her, I was like, I don't know if Facebook's really going to work out for what we're trying to do. And everyone that's on Facebook is so heavily discounted. I'm worried about the quality of service that they're able to give with even a one truck price. Like you're literally at cost here, man. Like you can't do that. You got to make a profit on stuff or else you're not going to grow. Like, I'm sorry, it's business. You don't call Amazon and say, hey, I know you made a trillion dollars last year, but can you like cut that down to zero so that I can get a better deal on my product and services? I need a 30% discount. Yeah, it's just not gonna happen. Um, so I, I think being able to stop that. Now, Facebook for us right now is huge. Um, it, it's doing really well. Um, we have some really good partners in in the business world locally with the networking groups that we have. We have some solid people that Alex, of course, we work with all the time that literally care about each other's business. And it's such a good feeling because I stand behind these people as if they were my own. I take them under my wing. Um, there's a, a newer plumbing company that's amazing. I, I love their their vision. They have they're they're new, they're growing, you know, and that kind of stuff. And I love being able to give advice when they need it and it's not biased and it's not like, oh, you don't know what you're doing. Like, I know what I'm doing, I own the business. Okay, get off your high horse, dude. It's okay to say you don't know something and be an owner. You don't need to be king of the world. You need to listen, you know? So my biggest advocate to people as a new business owner and an entrepreneur is listen and react to those um, situations. So I I would definitely agree with you. I mean, one of the things that, well, I can't remove it. One of the things that I see is the people that just are getting started, they always have to feel like they're the expert. They're the go-to person. When it's so much easier and better for you to just say, hey, we're new. We're we're, we're evolving. We're growing. Grow with us. And and so sometimes the posture is... Is, is worse off than, than how it would be ordinarily. Or if you're a step, like you're saying before, if you're an established company, it's the, I know it all, calm down little children, let me do this. Because quite candidly, uh, there, there's companies that are, we've only been around for five years, but there's companies that have been around for four years, three years, two years, one year, just getting started, that I can learn a snippet of something oh, yeah. that they're doing to make my process better. and. Yeah. I, one of the things so that true. one of the things that I got in trouble with was I always I, I'm very much like you I think I, I'm always trying to figure out like how do I make this one thing better make this one thing streamlined yeah. improve this so if I'm gonna pay for it or use it or apply it I can get a better return on my investment and mm-hmm. some and, and and when you're the owner of that entity or the the steward of that entity and you're being told basically your baby's ugly how can you fix it. Um, it, yeah. You can get in trouble, and so some business owners, when when you when you're told like, hey, here's what I, gold shield, here's what I would do to impact your business, you have to learn how to take that in information, filter mm-hmm. it as to, I'm not attacking you, and say, okay, yeah. Charlie or Alex or whoever it is, I see what you're saying. How can we apply it? Thank you, or thank you for the suggestion, and then just move on. Yeah. And so many people either internalize that more and think I'm against you, when really yeah. it's just like, how can we make this thing better or make your thing better? Yeah. And that's the cool thing about what we've put together with the networking group is that it really has a time dedicated to focus on that. Mm-hmm. And and so many small business owners, we've talked about this many times, feel like they're on an island all by themselves. They can't yeah. reach out to someone because they can't show that they're 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 weak. faulty. They're weak, right? They're, they're not a, a great company that has yeah. any issues. Everything's perfect. Everything's right. amazing. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, right. There's what? so many issues that that a business is going through that it's like, mm-hmm. hey, I need help, and so I can learn from Gold Shield. I can learn from a plumbing company. I can learn from an insurance company. I can learn from a real estate oh. agent. I can learn from, whether they're in business for a long time or a short period of time. I can grab a little bit from a lot of people and say, how can I apply this information to mine, to my own business? And that's, yeah. and that's kind of the beauty about what we've done. And, and tell me a little bit about Facebook for you, because um, sure. when, when most small business owners think Facebook, they mm-hmm. think I have a personal account and I have a business account and I'm gonna post on my personal account and I'm gonna post on my business account and I'm gonna boost posts on my business account because I'm gonna get a ton of business 
off of boosting my post on Facebook. Yep. Um, tell me a little Ooh. bit about, because you said that you, you, your, your, cha- your ideology around Facebook has evolved. Tell yep. me a little bit about what that progression was. Yeah, so public relations and how you relate to people. So what I'm using Facebook right now is a direct source to our clients on a, almost like a TV ad. So I'm on there, I'm showcasing who we are, what we stand for, the projects that we're working for. But it's a way to connect with people in a different way where in this COVID pandemic world that we're living in right this second, it's almost like people have stopped communicating on a verbal level, they're not talking anymore. So the amount of messages that I now respond to versus the amount of phone calls is actually, it's it's going crazy, it's, it's weird. It's You're seeing a lot more text message confirmations, you're seeing a lot of more email um, email uh, bookings. Um, and, and you as a business owner need to change that. You need to identify that people react differently in different situations. And luckily, we already had that set up. So that system and process was already in place because omni-channel is very important. And for those of you that don't know what omni-channel means, it means any way a person can connect with you, whether it's an app, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, any of the social media platforms, um, website, email. Um, I mean, you could send a freaking pigeon if you wanted to. I, I don't care. I'm going to get it one way or another. Um, so your omni channels have to be very clear and very easy to get a hold of you um, because they're going to communicate. Everyone communicates different ways, and you need to. Business is business, so you're really willing to lose money because you're not able to text somebody back. It's a free program that's probably integrated in whatever software you have anyway. Just make it and use it. And Alex, I know you have resources for that kind of software as well too. We've had conversations about that before. Um, so yeah, you, you need to be open and willing to change. Facebook in general has has been a big, um, I'm gonna tell this real quick because I have to say it. Your personal and your business are the same thing. People know and see and watch. So if you're bad talking something on your personal page, it's going to relate to your business page. So if you have those core values and you own those core values and you wanna portray those in a public forum, just know that you've cut your clientele in half immediately because half of the world believes you on this side, half of the world believes you on another side. It's very cut and dry. And let me tell you, Alex, me and you have seen this many times, but YouTube is a very, very powerful thing. Facebook is a very powerful thing. And you can go viral within minutes if you say the wrong thing. And if you believe in that, then that's you. You gotta like, you gotta own that up. But at the end of the day, you need to be open and honest that both ways of your personal and business are always going to be linked together, whether you want them to or not. And that's it, it's your business, so it's you. It's your portraying it. Um, well, just you know, think of it this way. You're gonna have your friends like you on Facebook. You're gonna have yeah. your competition like you on Facebook because they want to oh, see. Yeah. They want to see what you're yeah. doing. They want to see how they oh, can yeah. copy what you're doing. Yeah. Right. You're gonna have your detractors like you on Facebook because they're gonna be the ones that amplify with the things that you do wrong, say wrong, or believe wrong. Right. So I mean, it's it's very interesting as a small as a small business owner to be on a social media platform. That's why mm-hmm. I I, I kind of laugh a little bit when I see small business and I get it when small business owners say I'm not on there because I I, I can't handle that. Because I want my my thoughts to be my thoughts and not. There's your first problem. You can't handle it, so hire somebody that can because you have to be there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So simple. But right. but I've seen. I mean, even myself personally, like you know, I I'm an outspoken individual, but on mm-hmm. Facebook, the only thing I ever post is about uplifting people. Mm-hmm. Uplifting. How how do I how do I how do I hunt? How do I chase? How do I go after it? Go after the day. Whatever it is, yep. I have completely removed my anger thoughts that we all have right the there's so many times that i probably have posted and then deleted right away or got to the hit the send button it's like i felt better just typing it and now i'm just going to delete it right mm-hmm. because I, at least i got out somehow um yeah, my big thing is when i'm on facebook and i read somebody posting like a handyman service and they're doing electrical work and i'm like do you have a license to do this at all do you like are you supposed to do this oh no you're not okay stop doing it because you're breaking stuff in people's homes and you're gonna burn a house down. Stop, like just stop, you know? Yes, 100% agree with that. But I mean, it's, it's something where um, the social media aspect for a small business owner has evolved. Like I wouldn't yeah. even say 
posting on a business, I like, on Prime Media's Facebook page, I barely post on it. Because I know the algorithm is going to be about 8 to 10% of the people that have liked my page on Facebook are actually going to see my post. But we have found ways to circumvent that to get an enormous return on investment for your time on those social media platforms. And exactly. so that's why what's cool is, is, is being part of like the networking group that we're part of and maybe some others that you're a part of that I'm not. But um, that you have to figure out how you can make Facebook work for you that may not cost any money. I think I would probably have you agree in the last 90 days, you've made more money off of Facebook than, uh, than you've probably invested into Facebook. You ready for this? I'm gonna give you some crazy numbers here. So uh, I'm gonna be transparent as a business. Uh, I'm gonna give you an insight on some stuff right, real quick that I would normally not do for people. I have spent zero dollars in marketing in 60 days, zero. I have also done 300% more revenue in these past 60 days than I ever have as a company. So we're growing, obviously, and we're getting bigger. We have more techs and stuff like that. So there's part of that is that too. Your community has so many untapped resources, um, chambers, uh, village meetings, um, local charity events. Um, we're we're um, doing a, a golf um, charity event uh, coming up soon. Um, if you're not public, you're not out there helping the community, people know that and they're not going to see it. Um, it's also a better way. I mean, I'm truthful in saying that I care about this community. I care about this village. I care about the installs that are going in. It's not about the business end of it. It's about the actual people end of it as well. The business end of it will come with it because it's true. I care, you know, um, I care about small businesses in this area. I, I do not like the big companies. I, I have a very specific company that I am literally gunning for. They don't know it yet because I'm not big enough yet. Alex knows who it is. <laughs> XYZ. Um, so in my opinion, and it's funny because in this process, I've gotten phone calls from companies I never expected that they're like, what are you doing? Like, why, how are you growing so big? And, and, and these are not small companies that are, they're talking about this. Um, and it was like out of left field because my supplier called me and was like, hey, this uh, Joe company that's four times bigger than us is, is worried about you. Worried about me how? Well, because you're taking a bunch of business from them. And my supplier's like, oh, guess what? Well, they're doing stuff different and they're changing and they're listening and they're caring about what needs to happen and what customers are asking for rather than just being stubborn and saying, well, I've done this for 40 years. Congratulations, 40 years ago, they had carburetors and cars. Now it's a cool thing called fuel injection, which gets you 50 miles to a gallon. How's your 12 miles to a gallon by the way, I just drove, a, my, my Explorer is a V6 getting 30 miles to a gallon. What V6 in this world 20 years ago could do that? There's more efficient ways to do things. And if you're not willing to change or adapt to it, it's so bad. Um, we, had, we had a meeting um, with one of, the, one of the villages and it was, it was, we were sitting there and every one of the business owners, small business owners, was talking about kids and their cell phones. Oh, they're always on their phone. I hired these 19 year, all these young whippersnappers. I'm like, oh my, am I really listening to this whippersnapper conversation? Oh, they're on their phone. They're so hard to talk to. They're so hard to listen to. No, you're just not opening your communication channel that that person on his phone probably knows Facebook 70 times better than you'll ever know in your lifetime. Give them your business page have them post and tweet and blog and do videos and do TikTok funny videos. You have a TikTok funny, funny video as a small business owner. I, I just saw it the other day, someone at a local bakery did this really cute um, rendition of like Beauty Frozen. And the Beast, right? Huh? Was it the Beauty and the Beast one? Oh my God, it was so awesome. I, I, I laughed, I was like, dude, this is so great. That video is viral, that's gonna blow that business up. So you have a small business that has now just gotten this opportunity to be real big, real fast, because they did something different that's not thought about on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so, yeah. Well, that's and that's one of the things that I, I try and preach to, and, and I get in trouble for it a lot too, because my mouth. Um, you never get in trouble for stuff with your mouth, dude. <laughs> <laughs> is, is because 
again, it's it's like the I want to show a different way to do something. But when you when you go against an established entity, like you're saying, someone that's been around for 40 years, 80 years, 100 years, whatever it is, right? And they have their own way of doing something. And when you present something that's different, it it you have the ch- they have the choice to either embrace it, embrace the difference, <laughs> or say that person's against us. And <clears throat> and what's it, it's very interesting to see how that has played over the last couple of years um, in regards to just other entities and who I, who I really believe is going to excel into the next, you know, 10, 15 years are the ones that like, okay, we've been doing this wrong for a while. We've seen some, we've seen some downward trends over the last couple of years and we just harness the same thing. How do we be different? And, and, and so small business owners, I would, I would beg you to be like, okay, how are people finding you? They're mm-hmm. looking for you on Google. They're looking for you on Facebook. They're looking for you through commercials on TV still. Radio still works. Yep. Everything still works. Mm-hmm. However, you have to manage, like what you were saying is, what is my return on investment from these? And what is a branding effort? And what is a lead generation effort? I'm sure you know when you're going to sponsor a golf outing or a hole or put a billboard out there on on the highway, you are not going to get a ton of leads from it. It is not a lead generation tool. It is a branding tool. When you sponsor an event, it's not necessarily something that's going to be lead generation. I'm not going to get 100 phone calls or 20 phone calls saying, I saw you sponsor a car expo, whatever it was, and I'm going to call you because you did that. Yeah. No, but it's the branding tool. So you're, you, I, I agree with you. Chambers are great for, for branding tools. Uh, villages, fantastic for branding tools. Mm-hmm. And then, But you have to also divert into, if, if you had 100% pie, what money are you going to spend for branding and what mm-hmm. are you going to spend for lead generation yeah and i think that Alex, you do a good job with um i mean we've had seo conversations in the past too here but in every business is different and every company is different in every way that people are looking at that so you can't just take so if you're looking at the big companies and you're like oh man i hate those guys you're probably not being successful just to let you know because you're focusing so much on the negative rather than hey Right now, my number one person, the number one company that I just talked about, the big company that I'm going after, that I'm gonna take down, um, they have a phenomenal marketing team. Phenomenal, okay? They have a great slogan, they have great billboards, they have TV ads, all that kind of nonsense. I don't take that as, oh, look at they're doing. I look at that and say, hey, how do I feel about that? Yeah, I want to suck in that information that that's how the big guy's doing it. Okay, cool. So how can I incorporate that into me? And what do I need to do to get to that? And in 10 years, is that way going to actually work? Is it going to be the same as everyone else? So you have SEOs. I don't want to put all my money in pay-per-click for Google. I can't. Do you know why? Because the big companies spend tens to $20,000 a month on those pay-per-click ads, I'll be out of business. It's yep. not gonna happen. And I'm not gonna get the lead generation out of it that I need to. Now, there's a couple of companies that we do use for lead generation that I will not disclose at all um, because they work beautiful for us. They have a huge return on investment. And if you're a company that's an HVAC right now and you don't know these companies, well, shame on you. You didn't do your proper research to find out. You didn't try different avenues. The funny thing is, is right now, yes, I don't want to do pay-per-click right now, but in three months, I might want to do pay-per-click. And you need to be able to change your marketing ideas, your money that you go to, and you need to work with somebody like obviously you, Alex, who can change with that and not be biased to the fact that, well, this has worked for 30 years. The internet changes so fast. There's so many trends that came and go. And all these younger generations that are buying their first homes and have no idea what they're doing, um, and that's okay because I was a homeowner at one point when I first didn't know what an air conditioner was. You know, there was a point in time in my life where I didn't know how that thing worked. I didn't know what I needed to do with that. Companies like us that care about the education around that, I will love to be in a first-time home buyer's house because I will spend a whole day, if I need to, for free to explain 
what you need to be doing in this home. Because guess what? I got you for life. And I want that because then I know that everything, I trust that everything is going to be good, you know? Well, one of the cool things is that, you know, with, with technology and automation and everything, we've, got, we've come with a lot of acronyms. There's SEO, mm-hmm. there's PPC, there's sure. SMO, there's, there's all these other different things, social media marketing, uh, you know, all that other different stuff. And really what it boils down to is what I call the CPLL. And it's, it's a little bit different. Most people know CPL as cost per lead, right? But what mm-hmm. I care about is the cost per legitimate lead. Yeah. And so the only way you can really define if a call is legitimate, because you can, you can manipulate clicks. You can, you can have some guy in India pay a million dollars to, to throw a bunch of uh, a clicks your way and show all this tremendous growth. And your bounce rate's gonna be horrible. And, but you got all this activity, right? Smoke and yeah. mirrors. So as a business owner, when you talk about leads that are coming in, as a because that nothing nothing grows in your business until a lead has converted into a client that has then paid. Yep. So you have to have some sort of tracking software that shows I got this from the billboard, I got this from the radio, I got this from the website, I got this from the the golf outing that I did for branding tools, right? And you have yep. to understand legitimate leads versus just a lead that came in. Because if you just look at how many calls you had on a report and it showed 147 calls, it's like, great, I got 147 calls, I paid six grand for this, fantastic. But then if you go into the detail reports of how long did you, how long did they talk to you? Huh? Is that I'm broke is what I just heard. (laughs) Is, is you know there's it's funny because I was just working with a uh, a flooring company a few weeks ago that that was showing like I, why would I need to do this I got 150 calls I spent six grand 150 calls I'm like okay let's analyze it so we went into the details we said okay how many uh, how many calls did you get 147 how many of them were o- were over 50 15 seconds well we we outed all the ones that were under 15 seconds okay let's out all the ones that are out of state calls or 800 calls, because who's gonna call you from one 800 number for your flooring company, right? So we keep, on boiling, we keep on boiling this down, and then we go, okay, how many of them were duplicate calls? So you're out the duplicate calls. And then how many of them were calls that were within three days of each other? So they called multiple times within three days. So then yeah. you, you out those. So that 147 became 62. So now you look at the cost per legitimate lead and, yep. and it looks a lot different than what it was before. But yep. most of the companies that, you're gonna, that you were talking about, and I know the ones that you were probably mentioning, um, they just wanna show you the end all number. But as a business owner, you have to look at what is my cost per legitimate lead. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know we're running out of time. So I, want, I sure. wanted to ask you these two questions real sure. quick because I think it's, they're important. Um, how well have you, wh- what have you done to increase the perception of your business? This is going to be the mm-hmm. first question. And what type of strategy did you have to make that, to execute that? That's, that's my part one, A and B of the first question. So say the first one again, because I just want to analyze what you're trying to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done to uh-huh. increase the perception of your business? And did okay. you write down specific strategies to get there? Oh, yeah. Um, so the bigger part of what we did, so more visual, more focus. So Art and I sat down and yes, we did come up with a a very detailed plan, um, of what X, Y, and Z plans change all the time. Um, we bought, we built this corporate office and, uh, we finished it. We moved in, we had a grand opening, everything was looking great. And then literally COVID hit like, and I'm like, holy cow, man, we just spent a ton of money on this place. We had a solid plan in place for what the rollout of this is and visualization and the events that we had scheduled this year, um, all the outings we were going to do. There's a rib fest locally that we were going to be a part of and put a, a air conditioned booth in there that you can walk in if it's really hot outside and do an air conditioned booth and feel good. And, and do, I mean, there's, there's like a thousand ideas and in a second, bam, changed. You got to change your whole life. Um, and luckily, instead of taking the time to sit there and go, man, oh, COVID, and COVID this and COVID that, 
and I don't know what to do. And I'm, I'm, I was like, dude, we need to think different again. Like we just got to change. We got to change. We got to change what we're doing. We need to stop spending money on things that we don't need to spend money on. We need to use as much um, programs and, and things that are available that people don't know that are available. And we need to get back to education. Um, and one of our core values is education. So h- how do we educate? How do we do different things? So one of the reasons, uh, one of the big things is the networking groups we're just starting to get a part of. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to heavily invest in the community. Um, I'm going to outreach. I'm going to follow up with old clients that we didn't talk to for two years because um, those clients have got out of touch or they changed their cell phone and lost their phone number and they've just hired other people that you know have done terrible jobs or whatever. Um, so yeah, there, there was a big strategy involved. That strategy ch- changed drastically and moved into a different kind of strategy. Um, which luckily was successful right now and and why we're so slammed and why we're growing still and why we're going to have a positive end to this year, even with everything going on. Um, You can't be that person sitting back and and dwelling on the negative stuff. You need to just find the right, you know, part of it and go from there. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think there's, there's strategy and planning, there's execution, visualization for the community um, is really big visualization for the customer. Um, if you want to talk to art, you can talk to art. You want to talk to me, you can talk to me. Being readily available is another big thing. We, we never don't have time for our clients. Um, you know, we're busy, but we're not too busy. Like you still call me today. I still can send a tech out today. Um, we're, we're fully booked for the week. We have ways, we have things in place to, um, adjust for that busyness. Now, if I were to take 5,000 phone calls today, yeah, I'm probably gonna be a little stressed. I'm gonna be a little frustrated because I can't help everyone, but I'm also gonna be super transparent with clients that, hey, we just got 5,000 calls and we've never gotten 5,000 calls in a day. So can you just give us a second to you know, work on this? Because we have some efficiency stuff that we need to work on in there too. And it's okay to be vulnerable. Like, yeah, I mean, so I, I don't think we can talk about that more too. It's okay to say, you screwed up. I mean, I screwed up. So I ordered the wrong product for customers and had it shipped and delivered and walked in and been like, yeah, that's not the right air conditioner at all. Yep. That's my fault, guys. Sorry. I'm going to run to the store or to the supplier, pick up the right air conditioner, come back. And by the way, I'm staying here with you because I effed up and I'm sorry. And that customer literally, they put a five-star review about it. It was a, they literally put, it was a challenging day for Gold Shield. We could tell. They stayed till 10 p.m. to make sure that we had air conditioner for the next day. It's so easy to turn a, po- a negative into a positive if you truly are truthful of who you are and what you're doing and you don't have ill intentions. If you go into a house and you want to do ill intentions, yeah, by all means, you deserve that one star. But if you're transparent with a client and tell them that, hey, we messed up in whatever way we need to compensate you, we're going to do it. That, that sets you different than every other business out there already, you know? Yeah, so, I, was talking to okay. a, I was talking to a gutter cleaning company uh, just a couple days ago when all the storms were happening and they were get, phones were ringing off the hook. And, yeah. it, it, and, and the real thing is if you can invite a customer into your, into your world a little bit and say like, listen, you know, ordinarily we, we would love to just handle this stuff, but we have yeah. so much going on with the storms. We want to take care of everyone as, as best as we can. You know, it, that's that's what you gotta have to do as a business owner is is in that thirty seconds that you have, like we were saying earlier, to really make an impression. You yep. have to invite them into your world just a little bit, make them mm-hmm. feel good, and say, okay, they may be busy, but they're gonna be the ones that take care of me. And yep. and one of the things that I learned uh, years ago that I was I was great, graciously reminded of the other a couple of weeks ago was, if you're the person that answers the phone, mention that person's name three or four times in that conversation. If Derek calls me, I say, I say the name Derek three or four times while yeah. I'm talking to him. Because it yeah. builds, it's, if you have a short 30 second window, you mm-hmm. have that time to say, I, if I say your name, I'm gonna engage, you're gonna engage with me more. Yep, yeah. we had a customer a month ago that we were at this person's house they were they needed new air conditioning and they had mentioned they're like man my birthday is on sunday i guess well that's shot and i gotta i can't you know do anything because it's my birthday and you know i gotta pay for an air conditioner now and so i didn't take that as like oh let's just wow it's your birthday 
it's your birthday, dude. Like if I knew everyone's birthday, then I would love to like, you know, send you a card just to say that, Hey, happy birthday. You know, um, we, we sent them flowers. We said, you know, sorry, you, you had to, your air conditioner go down, um, on their birthday. The response we got from that client was just incredible. You know what I mean? And we didn't even, we didn't post on Facebook. We didn't talk about it. It was a one-on-one -on -one conversation between a customer and us. But again, I, you gotta think different. If, if someone's um, you got a birthday coming up and they mention it, they're mentioning it for a reason. It's, a, it's an easy way to, to relate to a client, show that you care. We have a spot in our computer system to put their birthday in there. Well, guess what we did? So now every, now every year we can write a little hand note saying happy birthday. And a, you, you're, you're showing that you're there for them, but you're not intruding on their life. It's a birthday card. Everyone likes to get birthday cards and mails that say happy birthday. And, and if, you know, if you don't, you tell us you want us to take it out, we'll take it out. It's, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? Um, and we don't sell any information, so it's not like we're selling it to anybody. So, uh, before, I have one last question to ask you, but before that, I had one person text me actually and said, both of our beard games are on fire. So, oh, yeah. So like I mean, fire because they're red? Or I, I, I'm, they're I'm guessing red. that. I'm guessing why we're both kind of gingery on that. But yours yes. is a little darker hue than mine. Mm. Um, but nice. I feel like the, the big question I wanted to ask you, because I think we unpacked a lot of things in this short amount of time, is sure. if you own a small business today, mm -hmm and it's not in HVAC, someone, someone totally different that you've never met, let's just say they're in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, what is the piece of advice you wanna say to the business owner that has, their gears have kind of stopped or they're really, really slow? What's something from someone that has seen such tremendous growth during COVID-19 that you could you could say to someone who has been kind of struggling you need a break you need a break mental health in a business owner is your biggest advocate for who you are if you think that you can't walk away from your business for a week to spend time with your family to do a mental reset my best ideas come from sitting on a beach because my mind is clear. I'm not worried about anything. I'm trying to reset what I need as a person. Um, you have supporters out there. You just don't know them or you haven't built that relationship. Um, if you are struggling, you're having issues with being slow or you're not coming up with ideas, networking groups are great. Um, you have a lot of small business, you know, Alex, I'm sure will be more than happy to reach out and tell you who, who our networking group. And if you're a quality person, we'll invite you in and we'll help and take care of you. Um, it, it's been a great thing for me. It's been a great way to meet people who actually have the same values of what we are. Um, and you need a break, man. It, it is. It comes down. You need a break. You need to turn your brain off. You need to set your cell phone down. If you're a 24-hour company, then you need to find somebody that can take that phone for even a day. Um, Art's taking more vacations. I'm pushing out of the door as much as I can. I've always been the person that if I hit that point, and I know that point because I get stressed, I start not sleeping, I start worrying. Um, that's my body telling me, dude, you need to get away. And luckily, my hometown is very calming and relaxing, and my family is wonderful out there. So um, it's pretty sights and lake and quiet. Um, I feel reinvigorated. I feel awesome. And if you have a team, that we talked about it today, Alex, is if you have a team, your team knows you're stressed. Your team is now stressed. And now your stress from your team is now rolling onto your customers. And those customers and quality and engagement is all going down the hill really quickly um, and you don't know that so um, I think my biggest advocate I can talk about in here is is literally think differently be true to yourself take care of your people that work for you uh, be understanding and, and if you're if you're in a really bad place where you're really having struggling issues consultants are really good things to invest in a good consultant will help you get out of that bunk 
and it's probably one of the best return on investments. Again, we talk about um, quality leads and lead generations, and you talk about brand recognition. Well, how about business development? There's no better thing. If you don't know it, seek help. Consultants know business. They understand it. They know what needs to happen and how to get things rolling. They'll help motivate you. They'll help push and, and actively, you know, um, change who you are, your thought process, or help you think differently if you can't do it. Um, business owners take on too much, man. They do. I see it all the time. They're like, oh, I got to do this and I got to do that. And I got to do da 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 da. Mike, why are you not hiring somebody to do that for you? If you're not good at it, if you're not good at bookkeeping, don't do bookkeeping. Hire a bookkeeper. That's it. It's as simple as that. You're gonna mess something up. It's gonna cost you thousands of dollars. We got audited this year um, and our audit went fantastic because we have an amazing bookkeeper. We had no issues in there. We knew what we were doing. We knew what we needed to say. It was the most easy interaction with the IRS that I've ever dealt with because we have somebody qualified to do that. If you can't answer the phones and be polite on the phone, hire somebody to answer your phones and be polite. Whatever you need to do, stop taking on the world yourself. You're going to burn yourself out, and it's going to affect you in the most negative way possible. One of the closing your business. <laughs> By the way, for those of you who don't understand where I'm going. Yeah, the the idea to turn off is really hard for small business owners. The oh, yeah. idea to admit that you don't know what you don't know is really mm -hmm. hard for small business owners. The idea to um, not take that phone call at eight o'clock at night while your wife is wanting to watch alone, which by the way, greatest show on TV right now. And I, I, I rave Absolutely. about it um, because you're worried that that one phone call is going to be a potential business or potential bad news. You got, you got it. You got to separate yourself. And so yep. that, that's a huge piece of advice. I thank you so much. I know we're a couple minutes over my, my allotted time with you. I know you're incredibly busy. You're on a 24 seven company and you know, he is going on in Chicago right now. And yeah. if you're, yeah. by the way, if your AC is going on 24 seven, like oh, yes. all the time, that is an issue. So yeah. call Gold Shield, let them take care of you. 847-376-8094, goldshieldtoday.com is their website. Um, I, I will tell you that I, I've known Art and Derek for a little bit, just, you know, a few, uh, not even a year, like a few months. And I can tell they're real genuine people. So if you have a chance, uh, if you have the unforeseen problem of too much, too hot in your house, or it's too cold in your house, or you want to put a ceiling fan up like a handyman service, or if there's any type of electrical issue that, that you want taken care of, or ducts clean, your air, air ducts clean. By the way, I thought duct cleaning was D-U-C-K for the longest fucking time. Um, yeah, I, I actually, that's how my spelling was. I actually put that by accident. I knew how to spell duct, but I put D-U-C-K. And Art's like, oh, I didn't know we were cleaning ducts today, Eric. And yeah. I said, well, yeah, you're cleaning the duct work. He goes, no, like a quack, quack duct. I was like, what are you talking about? I was so confused. <laughs> He's like, can you look at the invoice? I was like, oh, I really put duck in there, not like the duck. And I had a duck, and I'm like, oh, whatever. So professional. We're so professional. <laughs> So, so I mean, but again, Gold Shield Services is, is kind of is, is the up and coming company in the McHenry County area. They're already established in Des Plaines, but they are really reaching out to McHenry County and be like, hey, we're freaking here. We ain't leaving. And by the way, we do a damn good job compared to a lot of people out there. So we're not we're not going to be the we're not going to be the cheapest guy like we were talking about before with the guy out of the mm -hmm. truck that has no insurance, no benefits, no anything. It's just a side hobby, side hustle that has no liability if something goes wrong they stand behind their work. So I, I thank you so much for coming on to our, our lovely little show uh, to spotlight you guys a little bit and more importantly, give valuable information to other small business owners who might be struggling, who might who might need some advice from someone that's already in the minefield already, whether they're ahead of them or behind them, you can kind of learn from everyone. So thank you so much for joining us. And next week we're gonna dive in, even into more BS as uh, we talk to another business owner uh, that is going to kind of share their journey and their story uh, as well. So thank you so much, Derek. Hey, thanks, thanks so much. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. I'm blessed. Blessed.